Do not watch this video. I've got, I've got better things for you to do. And my mental health lately has been just all kinds of unreliable is, is the word. It's unreliable. It's making it damn hard to get crap done, let me tell you that much. Go ahead and smack a tired face emoji in the down below if you can relate. And I know you can. I can't possibly be alone in this, can I? Anyway, instead of the video I wanted to slap down today, I'm doing something else. I'm making a video whose only purpose is to not itself be enjoyed, but to point you to other people's stuff that I think you might get something out of instead. I feel good to spread a little goodwill around, I think. It used to be a thing that happened a lot in the earliest days of this site, by the way, for those of you who weren't here, like 20 years ago. And there were fractionally fewer creators doing this, and it felt much more like a community rather than a, a, a blood-stained battleground for scraps of eyeball attention. Anyway, Microsoft Flight Sim 2024 is like six weeks away from release now. So the hype train is picking up steam, or... No, this, that's not right, Flight Sim. Or the, the, the hype luggage truck... <laughs> What's the right metaphorical hype transporting ground vehicle here? Train just feels wrong. The hype little weird ladder car thing for rear end passenger use. That thing. I want to share a video with you called MSFS 2024 How Career Mode Works. It's from a dude I've only just discovered called Blue Games, and he seems like a pretty chill bloke so far. But he does a lot of flight sim stuff apparently and was one of a handful of hand-picked creators that recently had some pre-release hands-on time with flight sim 2024 and in this video he breaks down as you may guess from the title the new career mode stuff a mode that the previous version of the title did not have and a mode that may be a difference maker for some of you out there deciding whether or not you want to play this because if you're far more of a general gamer than you are a sim enthusiast like me this stuff will sink nice and deep into the part of your brain that loves gamification of stuff. And it will very likely be a super cool way to not just learn the game, but keep engaged with it. Because there's a, a skill tree-like type system thing progress to work through, which to a gamer's brain feels nice and rewarding. Following through all those steps of the tree and choosing your path, it's, it's like a skill tree, it's, it's awesome. In any case, I'm excited about it. I had a lot of fun with the previous version of Flight Sim, especially while streaming it, which we'll be doing again, of course, but I'm not a hardcore sim guy, so as enjoyable as it was, I did always want more, a more compelling set of goals to follow instead of just going, I, oh, I'm going I'm to fly this plane and this is my flight pass here. You know, this time around, when I'm in sort of gamer brain mode and I can't decide what I want to do, I can just, hey, follow through with some of those other tasks that are laid out in a nice little progress for me. It's not the only new thing I'm excited about for FS 2024. Maybe I'll make a video all about the other stuff, but uh, it is right up there. And Blue Game's video on it is easily, and I mean easily, the best breakdown of this new feature that I have found. Clean and clear. Great work. Go watch it. Also, um, just on the flight sim stuff, if you've got any inside tips about flight yokes, uh, I feel like I'm wanting to step up from the trusty but basic Thrustmaster that I got a few years back when 2020 flight sim landed or took off or reached the cruising altitude what's the right metaphor i don't have enough i don't have enough airplane metaphors my vocabulary jeez anyway i want to try yokes next i think i might enjoy a yoke so let me know what you think about yokes next the perfect prosthetic disability tropes by Cy the cyborg a 45 minute long video essay on some very interesting and valuable knowledge about disability and limb difference prosthetics, all wrapped up in the context of how artificial limbs and limb replacements are represented, or indeed misrepresented, in media. Specifically, in Cy the Cyborg's case, animated media, because they're an artist and that's their jam. And there's a spot in their video, well, two-thirds through-ish, uh, where I, you know, if I was making this video, I would have I would have gone in for some talk about Geordie on TNG and his visor that I think could have made a fairly strong point uh, for the kind of stuff they were talking about in the video. But hey, not every animation dork is also a Trekkie, so whatever, I guess. Forget about Geordie. Be half a nerd if you like. I'll be over here nerding up full strength style. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. I'm not sure where that came from. 
But seriously, it is a really well put together video essay that will offer you some really cool insights into both uh, fictionalized limb replacements and the real world stuff and the gap between those two. Not just interesting, but amazing to know about so you can better accommodate and respect folks with this kind of disability in the real world. So I thought... I thought I was pretty well informed on this sort of stuff. I've, I've known people with, with prosthetic limbs and I've had conversations about them and stuff, but I still learned some neat stuff from this video. And as someone who has spent a lot of time trying to mentally unpack a lot of concepts around transhumanism and the whole cyberpunk thing and, and you know, voluntary body replacements and that kind of stuff, I got some super useful insights about that, which I'll fold into any further thinking I do on those subjects. And finally, the last one I want to tell you about today, Exposing the Grift, Go Woke, Go Broke by The Birdman, with TH3 Birdman. The Three Birdman. <laughs> it's another video essay, this one's only about 20 minutes worth, and it utterly smashes the absurdity of that tiresome catchphrase I'm sure we're all tired of hearing, which is leveled at anything, game, movie, pair of socks that so much as has a rainbow on it, never mind someone with a you know, a non-pale skin tone, or gasp, a woman in a prominent role, for crying out loud, what's the world coming to? <laughs> I found this one while doing a little research when I was myself recently planning to do a video on this subject. But I am not making that video anymore because Birdman basically made the exact damn video that I had started writing. Right down to using several of the exact same examples I was planning on using. God damn it. <laughs> and I mean, it is a subject that is indeed clownishly easy to break apart and disprove. So I'm not surprised someone else beat me to the punch at taking the angle that I was going to take. But it is, it is so easy to find contradictive evidence of, uh, you know, go, go, go break. But having a solidified, structured and intelligently delivered set of counters to use when you hear some drongo say, go, 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 it's very useful. Because you can't really argue directly, one-on-one -on -one with these people. They're, 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 they have too much cognitive dissonance to, to escape, to have a proper conversation about it. You can't reason this type of people into, a, into changing an opinion that they didn't reason themselves into in the first place. So instead of wasting time arguing with them, you can just link them to stuff like this and go, Hey, check this out. They won't watch it, of course. Because they're terrified of being presented with actual facts that mean they might have to actually reconsider what they've been thinking and that they've been out loud saying a silly thing all this time that has no basis in reality and that is super embarrassing to realize about yourself so they'd rather avoid being embarrassed by just not confronting it. But you can send them stuff like this and laugh about how they won't watch it but, and then it frees you up to go on other more enjoyable tasks than arguing with self-proclaimed anti-woke types which... No, that, that's basically everything and anything. I, I've stepped in small brown squishy things in farm grass that I found more interesting and engaging than arguing with people like that, for example. Sorry. Point is, it's it's a great video. It, it does the job really well. Probably better than I would have done if I'm honest with myself. <laughs> it's very eloquent and it's earnestly delivered and it breaks down just how silly the whole concept of woke equals broke is and how it just makes no sense whatsoever and exposes it for the clownish phrase that it is. And for those of us already on this side of the fence, it makes a relaxing way to clear your mind of the subject. The way it's all laid out, you can just sort of release and uh, get on with your day. You know what I mean? So, there you go. Three videos, a little over an hour's worth of very watchable, well-made, entertaining content from creators you perhaps have not stumbled across yourself yet. Now, I am off to sit in the dark for the remainder of the day because my brain keeps making the wrong kind of neurochemical soup and it won't stop doing that. Which is it's a bit of a bugger, really. Inconvenient it was, is what it is. It's inconvenient. Thanks, patrons. Um, uh, uh, thank you very much for your support. I'll be okay eventually. I'll pass. For right now, I'm just, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just a mess right now. So, catch you next time. <laughs>